In this video, I'm going to show you how you can play different audio each time you return to your lesson menu slide. So I was building a course for my client where I had a menu slide, a lesson menu slide, where when the learner would click on those, they would jump to that lesson, and upon completion of that lesson, they would return to that main menu slide or main lesson slide, if you will. Here's what I noticed after uh, not too much work on it here. Let me show you what happens. Okay, so we start on the title page. We go to this slide. This slide contains a series of essential items you must review. Press each of these items to learn more. Once you have fully explored this slide, you will see the right arrow button allowing you to proceed to the final quiz. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Let's click on lesson one. For the purposes of this video, I've just made single slide lessons so you can see the problem. This slide contains a series of this slide contains a this slide contains a this slide contains a series of essential items you so there's the problem is that every time you return to that lesson menu slide you hear the same instructions it sounds like a broken record or a defective robot or something like that so in this video i'm going to show you a way that you can have a different audio message each time you return to that lesson menu slide. So I've created this slide here, which simply has a back button that would take you to the title slide and a forward button that in fact actually will jump to slide seven where the final quiz starts. And at this point, of course, I'm not gonna make this available unless you complete all four of these lessons. So how I do that is I hide this next button by clicking on the not visible and output icon next to the uh, item description in the properties inspector. I also have a bunch of shapes which are used as buttons. Uh, if you wish to use shapes as buttons, you just need to select the use as button option that you see here. And uh, that will create two additional states, a rollover and a down state. But I've also added a fourth state of my own design, a custom state called completed. And all, it's, all I've done is I've grayed out, changed the background to be white, and added a check mark icon next to the text within that button. So it's clear that, yes, you've completed this item. We'll take care of how that works within the advanced action that we're going to write. We also need some variables to make this work. We'll go into the project drop down menu and select variables. We're going to need to keep track of each lesson and whether it's been visited by our learner or not. So we're going to click on add new. I'm going to call this variable underscore slide 02 because this is the slide it's associated with underscore lesson 01. I'm going to click on control A on my keyboard and control C to copy that, save the first one, add a new one, and control V to paste that in and just change the 01 to 02. Press save, add new, paste it in again and make that three, and of course four. The other variable we need to keep track of is the number of, number of times that we've arrived on this slide. So we're gonna create a new variable called underscore slide 02 underscore visited. And uh, if you're OCD like me, you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna put a zero in there and save that variable. So I can go ahead and close this. Now I'm gonna start writing an advanced action that will take care of playing the appropriate audio clip depending on which visit to this slide we're on. So the first thing we need to do is delete the slide audio that you heard before when I previewed this project the way it was at first. Now, something to remember about not using slide audio is that if you're gonna use triggered audio from an advanced action, you won't have closed captions. So you might want to create uh, different captions on the slide that represent 
that uh, that narration in text form. I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this video, but I just want to suggest that to you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the slide audio and we can actually shorten up the duration of the slide back to its default three seconds if you like. So we're going to take care of several advanced actions. The first advanced action we're going to do is actually going to be an advanced action we're going to save as a shared action. And that's going to be at the end of all of our lessons. In my case, lessons are one slide long, but they could be as long as you wish in your version of this project. But the final button that returns you to the home slide we're going to run an advanced action that's saved as a shared action so that you can use it over and over again. That's one of the benefits of a shared action. So let's start with that. We'll go to the project drop down menu, select advanced actions because any shared action starts off as an advanced action. We're going to call this one lesson underscore complete. We're only going to do two things. We're going to assign the lesson variable with a literal value of one. Remember, we left that blank before, so essentially that lesson has a value of zero. Once you've completed it, we're going to give it a value of one. And we're going to jump back to slide number two. That's it. It's not complicated. I'm going to save this as an action. And I'm going to save it as a shared action. Now, I've said in other videos before, a shared action is kind of like a fill-in-the-blank advanced action. We're saving the logic kind of behind the scenes, and we're just indicating to us later what we want to fill in those blank spots with. And in this example, I need to keep track of the lesson variable and the slide I wish to return to. That's it. You could put a description up here if you wish, uh, but something simple like this probably doesn't need it. I'll press save, okay, and we can close now. So when we finish lesson one, we're gonna click on the home icon and it's gonna execute that shared action. Make sure you select the right shared action. I only have the one, so it comes up by default. And then I'm gonna press the action parameters icon and fill in those blanks. So the lesson variable for lesson one is obviously slide two underscore lesson zero one. And the slide we're going back to, and you can type this in here, is that slide two branching. Press save. And I can apply essentially that same advanced action through the shared action to all my other home buttons here. So this is the one for lesson two. We're going to execute shared action Again, fill in those blanks. We're working with lesson two, and we're going back to slide number two. Save, go down to lesson three, and execute shared actions, lesson three, and slide number two. Last but not least, lesson four, Execute shared action, use the action parameter icon, lesson four, and of course we're going back to the branching slide, save. So every time I visit one of these lessons, I will be assigning a value of one to the variable associated with that lesson. So we can use that to check the condition of our lessons every time we return to this slide here, which is part two of what that shared action does. Okay, so now what we need to do is write our advanced action for when we arrive on slide number two, whether it's the first time or the second time or etc. So let's go into the project dropdown menu and select advanced actions. We're gonna call this slide 02 underscore enter. And the first thing we need to do is increment our variable that we're using to keep track of the number of visits we've arrived on this slide. So I'm gonna call this first tab increment. And that's literally what we're going to do here. We're going to increment our variable called slide two visited 
by a value of 1. When we start the course, it should be equal to 0. So the first time we arrive here, we're assigning it a value of 1. The second time will be 2, 3, and so on. Now, the first thing I want to do is check to see what that value is. So I'm going to do uh, a check for the condition of whether this is the first time or not. So I'm going to call this tab first. You can call these whatever you like. It's just more for my benefit to keep track of what I'm working on at any given moment. So when I'm working on checking for a condition, I need to select the conditional tab. And this will give me that structure. So if the variable slide two visited is equal to the literal value of one. In other words, this is the first time we've been here. We are simply going to play a particular audio clip. So let's go ahead and select that. Play audio is the action, and we just want to select the clip that we're working with. I've already put these in my library, so I can select them directly from here or you could import them from here if you like. You can preview them by using this play button right here. This slide contains a series of essential items you must review. Press each of these items to learn more. Once you have fully explored this slide, you will see the right arrow button allowing you to proceed to the final quiz. Okay, so now I can click on OK here. Now I'm going to replicate the same structure for the second visit to this slide and just use this Duplicate Decision tab button here. And we'll change the title of this to be Second. Okay, so on the second arrival to this slide, uh, we'll change the, the condition that we're checking for. In this case, we're checking to see if slide two visited is equal to two. And we're gonna play a different audio clip and get rid of that redundancy here. So I've created this clip um, all the clips in this video, by the way, were produced with Well Said Labs. There is a, a link in the description below if you're interested in learning more. Uh, but it's a really great artificial intelligent uh, voice tool that you can use to create very authentic sounding uh, narration. Let's hear what this one sounds like. Good job. You completed your first agenda item. Keep going. Okay, so now I click on OK, and that is that takes care of the second. I'm not going to have a different audio clip for the third visit. I think by this point, the learner should understand what we're doing. So there'll be no audio for a third visit, but we will have a final audio for the final visit. But we'll get to that in a few moments. Now what we want to do is take care of updating the buttons on our slide to reflect which button or which lesson has been completed here. So let's start with a new tab. We'll call this lesson one. And this will also be a conditional advanced action because we're going to check for the condition of the variable associated with each lesson. So in this case here, we're working with lesson one and we're checking to see if it is equal to a literal value of one. Remember, our shared action takes care of assigning that when we press that home icon at the end of all of our lessons. So if it is, in fact, um, a value of one, we are going to change the state of our lesson one button. You can see it down here in the timeline to complete it. That takes care of lesson one. Now I can duplicate this tab and create the same thing for lesson two. So we'll just change which variable we're checking, in this case, lesson two, and we'll change which button we're going to change appearances of. So there we go. So we've got two of them done, two more to go. This will be for lesson three, and we'll check the variable for lesson three, and we'll change the button for lesson three to complete it. Duplicate it once more for lesson four. We'll check the variable for lesson four. And if it is one, we will change the appearance of the lesson four button to complete it. There's one final tab we need to create here. I'm going to just click on duplicate decision here. 
but we're going to change this one quite a bit more. I'm going to call this check, as in check for completion. So in this case here, I also want to uh, add some additional lines here. So we're already checking for lesson four variable. Let's go back to lesson one and see if it is equal to the literal value of one. We can cheat a little bit here. We can copy that line, paste it in and just change it to lesson two. And the same thing here, paste in another copy of that line and just change the variable to lesson three. If you're a little bit OCD like me, you can use these arrow buttons to move those down and just keep them in order. And uh, we don't need to change the button state anymore. So I can delete that line. And instead, we're going to show our next button. But we're also going to play our third and final audio clip to let the learner know that they've been successful in completing this uh, particular interaction. So we're going to select play audio. And we can once again choose the complete one here. And I'll preview that for you now. Congratulations. You have visited all the items on this slide. Press the right arrow to begin the final quiz. Okay, so I'll click OK. We'll save that as an action. Click OK and click Close. So on this slide, on Enter, under the Actions tab of your Properties Inspector, if it's looking for something else over here, just click on the Film Strip just to get it back to this, and then select the Actions tab. And we're going to Execute Advanced Actions and slide to enter. Okay, and that looks good. I think we're good to check this out. Let's preview this in HTML5 in browser. Okay, so here's our title slide. I'm going to click next and this will be our first visit to the branching main menu slide. This slide contains a series of essential items you must review. Press each of these items to learn more. Once you have fully explored this slide, you will see the right arrow button allowing you to proceed to the final quiz. Okay, so they have pretty good instructions there. They'll know what to do. You can do these lessons in any order you wish. I'm going to click lesson two. And then we're going to return to the branching main menu slide. Good job. You completed your first agenda item. Keep going. Okay, a little bit of encouragement. Make sure they're doing the right thing. Let's do lesson one. No narration this time. Again, I think it would be overkill to have too much narration. Let's do lesson three. And finally, we've got lesson four. Congratulations. You have visited all the items on this slide. Press the right arrow to begin the final quiz. So definitely better than the robotic repetition of that single um, audio example. And of course, learners can now move forward and complete their final quiz. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.